Welcome back to the next video for IGCSE Computer Science. Um, we're still on chapter one, data representation, um, but we're at the end of this chapter and we're going to be looking at data storage and file compression. I've broken this final part into two sections. Um, the first section we're going to be um, looking at how data storage is measured, um, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, so on and so forth. And we're going to be looking at how we can calculate file sizes of an image file and a sound file using the information uh, we've been given. So I use this in class. Um, so I use the analogy Baby Shark, um, the song Baby Shark, um, because we've got a bit, um, which is the basic unit of all computing memory storage terms. And it can be either be, if we consider it to be a binary digit, it's either a one or a zero. So this is a bit. And I'll link this to the baby shark. The next one up, or the, or the daddy shark rather, is eight of these bits, um, which is called a byte. And the, the byte is the smallest unit of memory um, in a computer. One byte, of course, equals eight bits. Um, and the one in between, mummy shark, is halfway between a bit and a byte, and this is four bits of information and this would be considered to be, or called, a nibble. So we've got a bit, baby shark, we've got a nibble, mummy shark, and we've got a bite, um, daddy shark. Now we can look at um, file sizes in two different ways. The first method we use the um, use denry values. So for example, a kilobyte would equal a thousand bytes, one KB. Um, we multiply that by a thousand and we get one megabyte. Multiply it again by a thousand, a gigabyte, and we go up in thousands every time. So we're from a gigabyte to a terabyte to a petabyte to an exabyte. And as you can see, each time we've added three zeros on the end of each one to get the relevant value. So we're dealing with lots and lots and lots and lots of zeros. Now the other way, um, we're going to the power of two to the power. So for, and in the book, and this I've never seen this before, but this is interesting. Um, we're going to use the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission memory storage method, based on the binary system. So let's say two to the power ten, two to the power twenty, and so on and so forth. But we've changed the name. It's no longer a kilobyte, and I don't know whether this is for the benefit of IGCSE or what. But we're going, um, we're basing this on, on kibibytes. So one kibibyte is two to the power ten. So two times 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 two to get a thousand and twenty-four bytes. One megabyte is two to the twenty. A gigabyte would be two to the thirty, and we're going up each time. So right up to an exabyte, which would be two to the power sixty. As you can see there, we've got a lot of a very, very, very big number. So that's the two different methods. Now, the old way, when you were showing out, you're working out, when you were doing calculations based on this, you could do it either way. Um, I'm not sure what the exam board are expecting now. Um, um, we'll have to wait and see and watch this space on that. So now that we know about the different um, file sizes, and be that um, going up in kilobytes or kibibytes, we need to be able to establish how we can do calculations um, on bitmap images and on sound sample, sound, sound files. So in the first instance, we're going to look at um, calculating the size of an image, and this is based on the image resolution, i.e. the number of pixels the image has, um, the, image, the pixel matrix, which I'll come on to in a moment, and um, we multiply that by the color depth in bits. Um, for a sound file, and this is for a, a mono sound file, we use the sample rate, the number in hertz, and we multiply that by the sample resolution, which is measured in bits, and then we times that by the length of the sample, which of course is measured in seconds, how long it will be. If we want to turn this into stereo sound, which generally we would do, um, we will multiply the entire thing by two. So I have an example here, um, three pictures of a, of a tree frog 
1 in 24 bit, um, 16 million colors, 8 bit, 256 colors, and finally a 4 bit, which would give us 16 colors. So we have three different versions of the same image. Now, if we were to guesstimate that this image was 250 by 300 pixels in dimensions, um, that would give us a, a total um, pixel matrix, so multiplying the x-axis by the y-axis, um, by 7 to 75,000 pixels. Okay, We then would multiply that by the color depth, so if we were to say it was um, multiplied by 24 bits, we would get a value of um, 1.8 million bits. If we were to times it by 8, 256 colors, we would get 600,000 bits, and then if we multiply it by 4, 75,000 multiplied by 4, we would get 300,000 bits. Um, to, cut, to work that into bytes, we would divide that number by 8, because of course there are 8 bits uh, in one byte. For the last part of this video, I want to go through um, a few exam questions um, which might crop up on your exam. So first of all, we're going to look at um, measuring the size of an image. So exam, um, example, exam question one, a photograph is 1024 by 1080 pixels and it uses a color depth of 32 bits. How many photographs of this size would fit onto a memory stick um, of 64 Gibi bytes? Okay, we've put the I in between, so it must be Gibi bytes. So first of all, job number one, we multiply the number of pixels in vertical and horizontal directions, x and y axis, to find the total number of pixels. So that would give us a number of 1105920 pixels. We then we multiply the number of pixels by the color depth, um, and then divide by 8 to give the total number of bytes. So 1,105,920 multiplied by 32, give us that number there, divide that by 8, would give us a total of 4,423,680 total bytes. Um, to calculate how it would go onto a 64 um, gigabyte drive, we first of all we take 64 and we multiply it by 1,024, and then it, which would give us going bytes to kilobytes, Multiply it again by 1024, which would give us megabytes. Multiply it again by 1024, which would give us um, the gigabyte um, example. So that would be, again, another massive number starting with 687 bytes. So finally, we take that number and we, div uh, so finally we divide the memory stick size by the file size. So we take that original number, divide it by 44. Um, 4 million four hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred and eighty and we could see we can store um, fifteen thousand five hundred and thirty four photographs lots and lots of big numbers now one thing that the students always ask and I do not know whether this will be the case or even whether these um, sort of questions albeit these are example past paper questions will be on the paper because it does say that students are not allowed to use a calculator on either paper one or paper two now. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But that is basically how you would calculate. Um, now the second example, probably slightly easier, um, exam, um, exam question two, we have a digital camera and it has an array of 2048 by 2048 pixels. Basically the x-axis is 2048 and so is the y-axis, the, the, the grid matrix. And uses a color depth of 16, so 16-bit 16 color depth. Find the size of an image taken by this camera in bytes. Multiply um, number of pixels in vertical and horizontal directions to find out the total number of pixels. Well there we go, we've got 4,194,304 four pixels. Now multiply um, the number of pixels by the color depth, so we're times in that by 16, so it's 67 million, just over. 
Now we divide the number of bits, six, seven million bits. We divide that by um, by eight to get the number of bytes. So there we go. We've got eight uh, million three hundred eighty-eight thousand six hundred and eight bytes. And then, and then finally, we need to convert the number of uh, bytes we have, the eighty-three point eight million. Um, we need to convert those bytes into um, MIBI bytes. So if you remember from last time, we're moving up in thousands. So we go from bytes to kilobytes to megabytes. So to do this, we need to multiply 1024 by 1024 to give us a total of one um, just over 1 million, 1 million 48,578 and we're going to divide our original total, our number of bytes by that figure so 83.8 million divided by just over a million and we will end up with a final total of 8 MIBI bytes. Now for the final one, the final question, I'm going to move on to sound. So we've got an audio CD um, Again, these don't really exist anymore, but it's how we used to store them, how we used to buy um, buy songs, buy music back in the day. So we have an audio CD, and it has a sample rate of 44,100, and a sample resolution of 16 bits. Let's wait for the ambulance to go past. The music being sampled uses two channels, a stereo, to allow for stereo recording. Calculate the file size for a 60 minute recording, okay? So 60 minutes of music going onto that CD. So the size of the file, remember the calculation from before, the sample rate in hertz times the sample resolution in bits times the length of the sample in seconds. So we've got the value in hertz 44,100, we've got 16 bits for the sample resolution and we've got 60 minutes of sampled recording. So let's have a look at this. The size of the sample would be 44,100 times 16, times 60, times 60 again, because remember we're working in, um, this. it says 60 uh, minutes, but we need to get it to 60 seconds. So we've got a total value there in bits, um, a, a giant number. Multiply that again by two to get an even bigger number um, in terms of number of bits for a, a stereo recording and then divide by eight to get the number of bytes and then divide by 1024 by 1024 to convert that into megabit, mega, uh, maybe bits. So we end up with um, 60 minutes of recorded sound at that sample rate using that sample resolution would give us a total um, f file size, a total sound size of 605 maybe bytes. And that is it, that's the end of this video. Um, I did say at the beginning it is um, part one of, um, of two parts to sort of end the um, data representation series. So in the next video we're going to move on to understand the purpose and need for data compression and then we're going to be looking at lossy and, loss and lossless compression techniques. So thank you very much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe um, so I can continue making these videos. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much indeed.